Kaela, who is 13 years old. He graduated in SCPTS with Bachelor of Science in Theology last 2006 and had the privilege ministering here in the Baptist Church from year 2002 to 2005 while still a seminarian. Also, he is currently one of the associate pastors of Davao Chinese Baptist Church, handling the Young Professionals Ministry. Furthermore, he is a PNP Chaplain Service 11 Life Coach, conducting ministries at Regional Mobile Force Battalion, Headquarters, and Davao International Airport. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, please help me welcome our guest speaker, Pastor Cecil Perales. Good morning. Good morning. Mayan Buntai. Mayan Buntai. Sa imbang nabigyan ka na kayo ang amin. Mama ko kasi ito ka ngayon. I think she's watching right now. And it's a privilege for me to be here with you once again. And first time po ako dito sa Federal Baptist Church. Sa tulad po ng sinabi nila is 2002. That was 20 years ago. Maganda-ganda. And until 2005, before I got married, uh, I was a Davao Chinese Baptist Church, I was called there as a seminary student also on the weekend. And then 2006, they called me for a full-time ministry, uh, assisting Reverend Arnold Tan, uh, as a ministry at uh, the church. And this is such a wonderful uh, worship experience once again for me. Uh, during the day to talk about it, I was uh, ministering also with well, kasama ko po ang worship team and doon na mingaw-mingaw na ko sa drums. Sa chai pa pa ko, marami. Marami drums, we are just piano and bass guitar and electric guitar, but we don't have drum set. So, na-mingaw ko ba may sa sabak. Okay, silent night mo ko nyo dito sa church. Joy to the world mo ko ng korele. Hindi na. Okay, now, uh, kanina po, my, my text actually, nabasa na po ni, ni Dave kanina, Psalms 100, and because the main reason we are here today is to celebrate the goodness of God. Enter His gates with thanksgiving, like what our text says. And everything in our lives is really, must really be a thanksgiving. Thanksgiving should be a lifestyle. Diba? Ang pagpapasalaman po, hindi po okasyon ang pagpapasalaman. Pagpapasalaman po, lifestyle po yan, dapat po naka-ingrate po yan sa ating mga puso, sa ating mga sarili, bilang mga tao, bilang anak ng Diyos. Okay? Uh, one of the greatest privileges of being a Christian actually is to have the capacity to thank, regardless of what happened. May alam ko po, bawat isa po sa inyo, may mga issue po sa buhay, naroon po tayo pinagdadaanan. Normal po yan. Meron tayo mga struggles na dinadaan sa buhay, but uh, being a Christian, even with those trials in life, we should have the capacity to be thankful. Diba? Sabi nga nila, it's easy to be thankful when things are going on in our way. Yung lahat, okay. Diba? Pasado sa exam, pasado sa board, maganda ang pangangatawan. But a Christian can rise above any situation to thank God, even with all those things. Even with all those things. Paul, sabi niya po sa 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 16 to 18, he said, Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in what? In all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Ang pagiging mas mapasalamatan ng a thankful heart is actually a godly perspective. Okay? It's just a godly perspective. It's a matter of godly perspective. To be thankful in all circumstances, we need the proper perspective. Diba? That all things work together for good. Sabi nga ng, ng Bible. Mga kapatid, masaya ko ba tayo nga? Amen. Are you happy right now? Amen. Amen. Okay. I ask this because it speaks very much on how thankful you are in life. 
Have you ever noticed na yung mga tao na habitually ungrateful, sila po yung malayong po? Diba? Hindi marunong magpasalamat. Okay? Yung mga tao hindi marunong magpasalamat ay normally, ang lungkot-lungkot po ng buhay. Ang dami kayo pwedeng pasalamatan sa Diyos araw-araw. Diba? Every day actually is a miracle. A lot of times, we tend to thank God because may malabot nangyari sa buhay natin. Di mali ako sa akin, Lord, thank you! Kapasa ako sa isang, Lord, thank you! Nagkaroon ako ng magandang business, Lord, thank you! But actually, kung papansinin mo, every day is a blessing. Every day is a miracle. Even when you wake up in the morning, that's a miracle. Amen. Amen? Being with your family is a miracle. Being with your husband and wife, spouse, being together, that should be a miracle na worthy to be thankful. Ako, I thank God because kinamahan ako ng daughter ko dito, Nika. Hi, Nika. My wife actually, hindi po siya nakasama because kulang po yung sa day school teachers po ngayon sa church. And kinamahan din po siya ng, ng uh, eldest po, si, si Martin, and then si Nika po sumama sa atin uh, ngayon dito sa, sa church. Minsan, uh, When you're serving a church in a proper, in a pastor's perspective, thank you, Mika. Pag isa po sa mga nagpapaginipan, pagiging pastor is not actually hotel members or is not actually na walang tides. Actually, minsan ang problema po ng ng namin mga pastor, yung parang nagbibigay sa amin ng burden, is actually the ungrateful people. Yung mga lahat na lang merit lang, kasi nga they they tend to be yung parang ang lahat tayo nila sa pagpapasalaman. And, when you look at Pastor Elmer siguro, he smiles and everything, he welcomes you, but the struggles are real, deep inside. And one way or another, hindi lamang po siya yung mapiktado, pati yung wife niya si Wen. Diba? Pero ito lamang po ang catch. Even though there are struggles with us in the ministry, we still have to serve. Because that is our calling. Yeah. That is our calling. Let me one of the coolest uh, person, siguro, na namit ko sa buhay ko is my one-time mentor, si Reverend Eddie Barrienas. Nasa California na po siya ngayon. Hindi na po siya nagpapastor. Uh, before siya dumating po sa church namin, I came from Cotabato City, Cotabato City Baptist Church, namin po, Cotabato City Cathedral of Faith, ang pangalan. Uh, before pa siya dumating, ang dami kong problema ng church because of the other pastor ko na umalis. So, in fighting, bitterness, they will still watch toward each other. And then, dumating po siya, namanan niyo po yung mga problema na yun. And eventually, uh, yung mga loyalists po ng former pastor, sumama na po sa kanya. Okay? So, but, uh, Pastor Elmer served the church faithfully until Uh, I think after four years, a church in California called him at Mugi Patapos of Gold. Then, few years back, nagbakasyon po, and then we have coffee together, pusa-pusa, and then, oh, Pastor Dalenas, pusa-pusa po kami. Sabi ko sa kanya, Pastor, paano mo na-survive yung burnout sa ministry? Pastor Yad. Sabi niya, sabi niya, simple lang, serve the Lord with gladness, no matter what. Serve the Lord with gladness. He then added that if there is no gladness in what you do, hindi lang po po sa aming mga pastoral, kahit sa lahat po may ginagawa niya. If there is no gladness in what you do, you better stop what you're doing and go back to God. Ask again yourself, why can't I recognize the joy of serving while in the midst of heartaches, while in the midst of difficulties, while in the midst of trials? Okay? I think the answer is, it's because we put so much focus on ourselves. Bakit hindi natin kaya nirecognize ang gladness sa pag-serve sa Panginoon? Because we put so much focus on ourselves, not allowing God to control our life or not allowing God to be involved in everything that we do. 
The thing is, nare-remember lang natin ng Panginoon kapag kailangan natin siya. Tango ba? No. Kapag nagkasakit ka, kaya sabi, na, sabi nga nila, trouble and sickness is the best friend of God. Kasi doon lang daw natin na alala ng Panginoon. But if everything is okay, if business is success, successful, work is okay, family is fine, then God, dyan ka lamang po sa bibi. Natawagin na lang kita kung pagkailangan ko. Kaya malungkot ang buhay. Kapag may mga problema ang dumarating. Okay? And to the perspective also, na we, we fail, na, na we fail to, uh, dati na makita kung paano gumawa ang Panginoon around us. Now, you might ask yourself, how can I serve the Lord in gladness in the midst of hardship? How can I serve the Lord in gladness in the midst of hardship? Pastor Ed said, focus more on God's character and learn to adopt this character in your life. Not just mere head knowledge. The thing is, we love to memorize verses in the Bible. But do you really apply it in your life? Yeah. Sometimes we love to study the Bible because we can have it to debate kasamahan natin. Yeah, masatano. Okay. Yung sakit na mga ni mga pastor. When we are reading the Bible, may tinatawag ko kami, uh, hindi minsan maiwasan na sakit na sermonitis. Kapag nagbabasa kami ng Bible, instead na uh, dinadigest namin kung anong sinasabi ng Panginoon, ah, nasa isip pagka namin doon, maganda ito ng first point sa sermon ko ngayong Sunday. Ay, maganda ito ng message sa Bible study. Ganda ito. Instead of digesting it, uh, iba yung nasa isip ko namin. Near head knowledge. Now, to real up this church as you celebrate your anniversary today, 55 years, wow, that's a blessing. You witness God's goodness, God's love, and God's faithfulness in all those years. So, paan tayo mag forward? I tell you, you cannot use the victory of yesterday. My past name in your journey of tomorrow. Okay. You have to rely on God on your journey. For another more, maybe 10 years, another 50 years, you rely on God on His character in order to serve Him with gladness. And what are those characters? Okay. Punta na po tayo sa mga puntos po natin. I will concentrate on verse 5 po ng Psalms 100. For the Lord is good, His unfailing love continues forever, and His faithfulness continues to each generation. Number one, for the Lord is good. God is good? All the time. And all the time? God is good. God is good? All the time. And all the time? God is good. God is good. Di ba ko maganda? Ever since you praise po na yan, and then, uh, yell, uh, sa tawag nila, cheer and yell, na popular is when you go more away, uh, everyone in Christian community loved it. Kalagi kong sinisigaw yan. And we got to adapt it in, in many uh, worship celebrations. But honestly, do you believe the statement? Do you really believe it? All the time in your life? The statement? Amen. All the time. We find the goodness of God as a rhetoric theme in the scriptures. God has to be good. Yung goodness niya po, connected po sa holiness niya. Goodness sa Panginoon. Yun po yung nature ng Panginoon. Remember, God is good. If, for example, sa buhay po natin, we receive forgiveness from our sins. He listens to our prayers. We experience intimacy and fellowship with Him. We can trust Him whatever happens in our life. These are all based sa goodness po ng Panginoon. But sometimes, we don't see the goodness of God, especially when something bad happens to us. But when we experience heartache, tragedy, disappointment, 
It seems like God is not good. How can you say, Pastor, God is good better than dialysis, Mang Kupal? What about this one? How can you say, Pastor, na God is good na ba kaya mo trip na ako sa akong kami? Diba? Why do we allow your money if God is good? Why do, sabi na nila, why do bad things happen to good people? Assuming that you are good. Diba? Part of our problem is that we spend too much time kasi complaining. Complaining uh, about the bad things na nangyayari sa atin. And not enough time actually in rejoicing with God for the victories that you experience. Sometimes, sa mga uh, victories na naranasan natin sa buhay natin, after natin magpasalamat sa Panginoon, nakakalimutan na natin ang Panginoon. Di ba? Nakakalimutan na natin ang Panginoon. Kaya sabi nila, uh, when you are praying for healing, actually, it's more than healing that you really need. Because one way or another, if God grants you the healing that you want, what you need is an eternal part ng buhay mo, and that is the Lord. Sometimes, binibase natin ang goodness ng Panginoon sa experience natin. Ha, gumaling ako, kasakit ko, experience ko yun. But not by its source. Okay? For example, meron akong bad experience sa Coca-Cola, sa soft drink. 11 years ago, na hospital ko ako because of coke. Okay? Since then, hindi na po ako ngayon ng soft drinks. 11 years. But my experience doesn't determine if coke is also bad for you. That is not the standard. My experience is not the standard for goodness. Di ba? So, our problem is we we use the wrong standard for goodness. We use our standard. Ito po yung standard natin eh. Good is whatever good for me. Good is whatever is good for me. <coughs> me. We are saying that I am the standard for good, but the truth of the scripture is God is the standard. standard. Amen. Nabasa ko po ito somewhere, matagal na. Sabi po, are you going to believe in God only if He acts like you want Him to? Then carve a God out of wood that suits you. Carve a God that gives in to all your wishes like a genie. Carve a God that grants wishes even though it leads you to destruction. Because if you have your own opinion on how a God should act, when you would be better off worshiping yourself. Since you're putting yourself much higher standards than God. God is good in all the time. God is good. And that goodness is what we are celebrating right now. Amen? Amen. Not your own standard of goodness, but God's standard. Amen. And that includes the hard times. That includes the hard times. That includes the unanswered prayers. That includes the heartaches. God is always good. His goodness is not limited to the circumstances na nararanasan mo ngayon. He is not limited to that. Diba? Whether it's nice or bad, I want you to know that if you cannot think of anything, of any other reason that you cannot acknowledge the goodness of God, think of this. God forgive me your sins through the blood of Jesus Christ. You know what the scripture says? While you were still sinner, God forgave you. When the same other scriptures, while we're still enemies of God, He forgave us. Hindi po inantay ng Panginoon na mag- mabuti ka muna bago kita patawarin. That's our standard. Diba? 
Ang sober standard, lalo na sa mga mag-asawa. Tawang siya, mag-upal ulit balay. Mag-upal doon. Okay? That's our standard, no? Ang Panginoon ito. While you are still sinner, God forgave you. That's how good God is. Wow. And that points us to other next point. His unfailing love continues forever. Let's be clear that God's love clearly is not based on our spiritual condition or our moral predisposition. It is not based on our attitude. It is not based on our behavior. Rather, we see here that God's love for mankind is unconditional. Okay? He loves us. He loves everyone. And this is one of the things that set him apart from any other God na pinanimulawan ng mundo. From any other religion. Diba? Throughout the ages, men invented gods for themselves. Men invented gods for themselves. Merciless God, a uh, uh, God who is so demanding. But our God is not like that. He loves you unconditionally. No matter what you're going through right now. And I tell you this, scandalo, no? Even ang bubububo ka na gabi, tell you, the Lord is rich out to you. He loves you. Okay. He loves you. There was a story, uh, years, years, uh, tumalaw daw, ang mga Bible scholars na tapak-tapak sa isa kapo difference. Okay? And then, uh, before sa pagtapok, story-story daw sila sa Juan, uh, informally, and time has brought up a topic, kung saan ba unique sa Christianity? That, set it, that it will set apart sa ubang religion. Gusto may unique sa Christianity. Kamu daw? Na yun nag-suggest, ah, unique sa Christianity, incarnation. Ang Diyos, may mong tao. Na yun na yun, naman yung nalang religion. Na yun nag-abili, hindi nga. Okay. Uh, resurrection. Nabanahaw sa patay si Jesus. Di ba? Patay sa tuwa. Munaw ka sila, nakapod. Na religion nga na. Then while they are contemplating kung sa may unique Christianity, sulod si C.S. Lewis, author ng Narnia. Okay? C.S. Lewis. And then, yun niya, kung sa may commotion na niya, yun, uh, they, they, they told C.S. Lewis, kung sa may unique sa Christianity. And then, to call me C.S. Lewis, just one word, grace. Gracia. Okay? Lewis continues that Christianity uniquely claims that God's love comes free of charge. Free of charge. No strings attached. And no other religion makes that claim. Only Christianity dares to proclaim God's love is unconditional. An unconditional love that we call grace. The authority of the Bible boldly proclaims that grace really has kumbaga, it, it has nothing to do with yourself. It has nothing to do with your good works. It has nothing to do with your tithes and offering. It has nothing to do with your service in the church. It has nothing to do with you leading the worship here. No. Everything is free and conditional for and grace ng Panginoon. God's love for us is unconditional, brothers and sisters. Yun pa ni Philip Yang say, there's nothing we can do to make God love us more, and there's nothing we can do to make God love us less. You know, lagi po gano'n tayo tamahan ng Panginoon. He came down to our level. And that is the very picture of God, the sovereign God, the most powerful God, the most powerful, stupid God. Just to reach us out. Stooping down, kissing us. 
Yung malilito yun po yan, labing ka, yung mga tayo. Every time I came home, pagdating sa bahay, I would stoop down to them, to their level. Kiss them. Kiss their foreheads. Kiss their cheeks. That is the very picture of the father. Because he loves you so much. He stooped down to reach you. To reach you because of his love for you. Jesus Christ made the ultimate expression of God's love by giving his life on the cross for God's so love the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have ever life. And by choosing to believe in him, you access, you have access to that love, to that grace and the forgiveness that comes with it. Yes, the love. Lead us to our third point. His faithfulness continues to each generation. Diyan na po ng choir kanina ng WDF. Faithfulness, God's faithfulness. God's unfailing faithfulness means everything He says and does is certain. And that we can be certain that He will always be 100% God. 100% of the time. Or He will not be God at all. His faithfulness to us is never partial. Okay? Hindi po partial ang Panginoon. You know, people will let you down, people will fail you, but God will never fail you. Amen po ba? Amen. Okay. He has an unfailing freshness of faithfulness. The scripture says, they are new every morning. Being faithful means, means you can trust God. He has the track record that we can follow everything. Ito lamang po ha. Let this be clear to Matthew. The faithfulness of God includes destroying your expectations. Destroying your expectations. Yes! Jesus never fails. Just like what the popular song says. But it means he will never fail his purpose in your life. Okay? It means not all your prayers will be answered. Not all your prayers. Not you, all your demands will be granted. Not all your heart's desire will, that the Lord will follow you. Okay? Let's admit it, there are prayers we ask na actually hindi po beneficial sa atin. You know, minsan nag-meditate po ako, nag-contemplate, Lord, eh, alam mo, isa sa mga pasalamat, pasalamat ko sa Panginoon, Lord, thank you for not answering this prayer. You know, parang po ako mga prayer na yun, nakalis talaga sa mind ko. Tapos, habang iniis po, Lord, salamat, hindi mo ito sa mga. You really are faithful, oh Lord. You really know me. You really know my future. Di ba? So, isa yun sa mga pasasalamat ng Panginoon. His faithfulness rescues us for the things we knew is right, but actually, hindi po align sa will po natin. How many of you, how many of you heard this phrase na, Life is a battle between good and evil. Life is a battle between good and evil. But actually it's not. Life is not a battle between good and evil. It's just too black and white. Alam na natin kung ano tama at mali eh. Di ba? Alam natin mali ang pakikiapit. Alam natin mali ang magnata. Very black and white po yan. Alam agad natin kung ipaparo natin o hindi. Actually, life is a battle between God's will and your own good intentions. Minsan, pinupush natin yung gusto natin at sinasabi natin sa Panginoon, Lord, maganda ito. Pero ang tanong, will ba ng Panginoon? That is why God, God, let us grasp us a papa. Sorry. Uh, Sorry. 
Even mga pastors. Para sa ministry ko ni pastor. Kuha niya sa kapa. Para man din sa ministry. Magkatabang din sa ministry. Hindi na ministry. Greek. Ang Greek. Hakok. Magkahakok. Sinod lang. I will not feel better. Is it God's will? O your own good intention? Di ba? O kusip po yun sila. Hindi po sila magkasama. Tatanungin mo ang sarili mo. Minsan, nasabi ko na po ito noon. Palagi ko po ito pinipit ko na when I'm here. No, nasa po yung bakit siya. When you are praying, minsan, you ask God to bless your plan. Lord, ito po yung plano ko sa buhay. We bless you po sana ito, Lord. But actually, the prayer is, Lord, I don't plan mo sa buhay ko. Then I will follow that. Is it your plan, Lord, for me to go abroad? If not, I will follow you here. If yes, then guide me, O God, kasi mahirap ito yung struggle na ito. Is it your plan, Lord, to plant another church? Good intention. But is it God's purpose? If not, If it is your will, Lord, then you will bless that. The story of our church, Lord, magpupang mabig building or not? Can you imagine, we are planning to build a building na 100 million po yung katita at kwarta lang sa church is 30 million. And 30 million, this will be a plus of foundation. Walang kay poste na natukot. And then, we have this kuhaan na Promise of murag ang impression sa ginoo sa mga no solicitation, no pledge, no loan. But after all those long years, hindi na pwede na pwede na. Alam niyo ang prayer na namin sa Panginoon that time, Lord, we are convinced this is your project. We have prayed for how many years and we are convinced that this is really your will. If this is your project, you will be the one to finance this building. And it did. It did. Yeah. The Lord is faithful. Maybe to appreciate the faithfulness of God, we just need to change our agenda. Like changing your prayers from need-centered to God-centered. Mm -hmm. Change your, change your prayers from need-centered ako. Ako, Lord. Gusto ko ganyan, Lord. Gusto, Lord. Gusto ko, Lord, hindi nga panahon. Mag-asawa na ko. Gusto ko, Lord, hindi nga panahon. Yeah, successful na ko. Gusto ko, Lord. Gusto ko, Lord. Sa ba ang pangkuta na? Ang sa gusto ni mo, Lord. Even mo ba? Sa may gusto ni mo, Lord. For example, you really pray for good health. But God wants pure hearts. More than you pass the board exam, He wants you to trust Him that He is in charge. He will be faithful in your future. You know? Ako talaga nun, pangarap ko magiging siman. Graduate ko ako sa Max. Alam, pinush ko yun. To the point that I am really disobeying God. Alam ko, tinatawag ako pa ninyo sa ministry. Ito, gusto ko magsiman nun. Hirap na ng buhay ko, lumaki ako, tapos Pastor Madraga ako, pati ko yun. Yung mga mandi na ko. Hindi mo prayer to God. But, until the Lord convicted me and I changed it, and the Lord has been so faithful since then in my life. The Lord has been so faithful. Grabe yung argument ko dun sa Panginoon, Lord. Pobre na ako sa mga pastor ako. Pobre pa yun. Yan ba? Ito yung mga experience ng mga Lord. Basta, alam mo yun, yung, yung, yung kuha ng Panginoon talaga sa akin yun, hindi ko talaga makalimutan yun. Sinasabi na talaga ng Panginoon sa akin yun. Kundit ko sa heart ko, just trust me. Take that one step of faith and I will do the rest. God has been so faithful. Remember this, God did not promise that skies will always be blue. Like it or not, rain will come. Kasama po ng rain, flooding, inconveniences. God did not promise joy without sorrow, or peace without pain. 
God did not promise that we shall not bear burdens or face temptations. But God promised strength in our weakness, rest in our weariness, light in our darkness. He promised mercy in your trials and struggles, grace for your souls, hope for your future, and love so unconditional. That is the faithfulness. So brothers and sisters, what are the lessons we can learn? Let's face it. Pressure will always be around, but God's promise will always be true that He will never leave us nor forsake us. Our text in verse 2 says, Serve the Lord with gladness. The Ibang translation in Abasa Kunati Kanina, Worship the Lord with gladness. This will only happen if if we focus on the character of God. Dr. Jerry Mulato, the speaker of the Chaiba, the church Sharon, the city pastor of Alina, the mother of his son, he sent me to text me to one time. Sa akin, sa niya, because of Christ's glorious resurrection, Christianity is a religion of joy, hope, and victory. We are and should be joyous people. Not because we, we are oblivious of the trials of the world, not because we are insensitive to reality, but because Christ did not end on Calvary. Think about that. Before I end, when a church is being constructed, there are a lot of small pieces of wood for these cuts around the construction area. Nagkalat lang. Yung mga these cut woods, yan, mga construction workers, yung nila kami, pang sugnod na. Mga engineer, they said, masura naman eh. But there is one man who saw it differently, si John Balino, yung draftsman ko natin. He put together those useless pieces of wood and created a masterpiece. Next slide. The cross for the record for that's the useless pieces of wood that. Ganda. The living backdrop. Yeah, beautiful. See that? You see, life is just about proper perspective para ma-appreciate po ang goodness ng Panginoon. We are like those useless pieces of wood, di ba? Full of doubt, full of bitterness, hopeless, daming pain, sickness, daming struggle. Ang sana natin sa rin, takapon mga buhay ko. But because of the cross, Because of the cross, because of Jesus, Papa, our Father, will not look at us in our tao natin na uselessness. No. The presence of the cross made us so precious. It's just a matter of perspective. You like it. Mga engineers, nakita nila basura. Pero si John Balino, only a draftsman, so it's different eh. And he created a masterpiece. And that is enough reason to live up this church, to serve the Lord in gladness. Amen? Amen. We're useless. In a sense, but not now. Because we have Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And we can serve the Lord with gladness. No matter what happens in our life. And being glad and being joyful and being uh, mal, uh, to recognize the goodness, the mercy and love and the faithfulness of God is not actually dependent on what you are facing right now. It's actually about God. He is the source of everything. That is His character. And if those characters 
the goodness, the love, the grace, and the faithfulness of God is not with us. How can we serve the Lord with money? And remember this, Torrey Baptist Church, you are the lighthouse of this community. You reflect God. You reflect His goodness. You reflect His love and His grace. You reflect His faithfulness. Mga tao sa labas, hindi ko nagbabasa ng hindi. Hindi po tila tayo nakikita. Sabi nga, Pastor, ano po yung Bible na binabasa mo? Ako, I have the New Living Translation. And I also love to read uh, English Standard Version. Okay? So, depende sa inyo. So, maybe some of you love King James Bible or New King James uh, Version. But actually, may nagtanong, ano daw yung best na version ng Bible? The best version of Bible is Y O U version. Let's see. The world outside do not read the Bible, but they read your attitude. They read your reaction. They read your life if you are blessing or not. They read how you treat the waiters at restaurants. They read how you treat the janitors. They read how you treat the GT drivers or the taxi drivers. That's what they read. And through that, if you reflect Christ, the goodness of God in your life, then they will the Maybe the Lord will bless you also just like that. So, to live up the church, happy anniversary. 55 years. Hindi po nag end dito. Ang service yun natin sa Panginoon, there will be more years. Hindi na lang, di ba? These young people will grow. Some of you, siguro yung nandito ako, wala pa kayo. 20 years ka naman. So, wala pa nandito. And, thank you very much for inviting me to this church. To bring you this way. I'll just remind you of this now. Now, individually, before we, before I close in prayer, my sermon in prayer, bow down your heads, pray. I don't know your situation right now. I don't know your struggle. I don't know if you are disappointed, discouraged. Maybe you're just a little bit nervous. Maybe you have to talk to the Lord right now. You have to ask the Lord, help me. Help me to serve in likeness. Even though, Lord, sa realidad, sa problema, may gagawin. Lord, ako dahil po trabaho. But help me, O God, to see your purpose in my life. Lord, ang iso ng business karoon. But help me to praise your goodness. Help me to remember that you are faithful to me. Help me to serve with God in gladness. Help me to worship today in gladness. You pray. It's not about you and your seatmate, it's about you and God. You have, your, you have your own plans. Submit that plan to the master planner of your life. You ask him, Lord, is this your will? Is this your will? Father God in heaven, to give the privilege of life. You have allowed your God to stand behind this public board and deliver your message. 
an imperfect messenger. But we have a God so perfect, so good, so loving, so merciful, so gracious, so faithful to us. Even though, Lord, we are unfaithful in a lot of times in our lives, we're still there. Even though, Lord, naaalala ka lang ang Panginoon namin kapag meron ka ng problema, you're still there, my God. And we praise you, Lord. We magnify your name. We thank you, Lord, for the wonderful gift of your presence, oh God, especially in this church. Lord, 55 years, so amazing, oh God. I'm sure, oh God, those 55 years, hindi po lahat po, Lord, uh, maganda ang nangyari. I'm sure, oh God, there are a lot of struggles of those 55 years. More than 20 years, Lord, since Pastor Elmer, oh God, is the senior pastor. I know, Lord, maraming po mga disappointments. But still, oh God, he smiles. He served because that's his calling. Help him, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. To continue, Lord, in this ministry you have given for him. To serve you in, with gladness always, O God. Even in the midst, O God, of, of the challenges, O God, of serving in this community, in this church. Be with him to end. Meron po sila mga desire as husband and wife. You know it, O God. I pray, O God, in the name of Jesus, that you will be granted according to your will and purpose for their lives. Bless them, O God. You have called Pastor Elmer, O God, in this church. And you have called Wayne to help Pastor Elmer. Bless them, O God. Strengthen them and bound together. And all the leaders of this church, they are to say, Pastor God, Pastor Alden, Lord. Pastor Dave, oh God, is a youth minister. It's not easy, oh Lord, to, to minister to the youth. Especially, Lord, in this times, of oh God, of social media. Help him, oh God, give him wisdom. Yes, Lord. Protect him also, Lord. Integrity wise, protect him from temptations of God in Jesus' name. Yes, help them. Help the leaders of this church, of God. Name Larry, name Pugi, and every people of God of this church will always be supportive, Lord, in the ministry. And they will always be, oh God, uh, the foundation of God you have put here. Of course, oh Lord, oh Holy Spirit, lead them. Guide this church, of God. To the path you are leading them to, Lord. Help their journey. Those 55 years of God has passed already. There are victories of God in those 55 years. A lot of victories of God. But those victories, Lord, hindi po namin pwede yung madala sa kinabukasan. Guide them, God. They need you, Lord, in their journey. Decision making, so God, choices to make wisdom upon them as a church of Lord. Bless every family you have represented this morning. I pray to God that your hand will reach out to every family. If their family or family member who are struggling with their health, struggling Lord, with anxiety maybe, struggling oh God maybe sa kanila Lord, Lord I pray to God in Jesus name may you reach out to their family members. Maybe they're struggling with doubts of God in Jesus' name, O oh Lord. Touch their hearts. Maybe somebody here, Lord, is too worried, O oh God, of your life. Help them to realize, O oh God, that you're the one who promises that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time together. Bless, O oh God, the remaining part of, of, of the celebration, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, for everything. We lift you up, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. Thank you for listening.